Just before we get started, today's episode of the show is brought to you one of my absolutely favorite sponsors, Vessi Shoes. Vessi make incredible 100% waterproof shoes, which they say here in my mandatory talking points are great for unpredictable spring weather. And I guess that would be true if you're listening to this in Australia. But right now it's coming to autumn. Equally unpredictable weather. I uh, These are like their slip-on shoes, which have never been worn. Look. I'll even lick them. Why did you do that? That's how unworn these are, because I keep them like so I can show you guys on camera, but I'm actually wearing a pair that I absolutely would not lick. These are like their Chelsea boot style Vessi shoes, and I have some B-roll that actually... My feet smell good. I think these Vessis must help my feet smell. That is not on the talking points, by the way. <laughs> you smell totally fine for some reason. Like, I don't know, other shoes you smell, you're like, oh. Hello. Um, I was out this weekend shooting uh, just for a walk in the forest and I shot some B-roll on my phone because I was uh, out, in the, out in the forest and I was walking along and there's these rivers, you know, that you have to cross, like little streams, more like not rivers, little streams running along. And there's these little bridges that you can walk across. And I'm just trudging straight through these uh, these rivers with these shoes on and they are completely waterproof. And you'll be seeing B-roll of that now. Are you testing if these shoes are waterproof? These shoes are fully waterproof. That's so crazy. Look. And that's wild because they look just like regular city shoes. And here I am at the countryside. Everyone else is like wearing Wellington boots or uh, what do Americans call those? You know, like waterproof boots. You know what I'm talking about, right? And uh, I'm just wearing these and I'm cruising through and I'm like, oh my God, is this leaking? And it's like, no, the water was just ice cold and my feet were getting cold. And I take them off and it's like my socks are dry. It's amazing. It's made with something called Dymatex. That's how they do this magic. They're comfortable. They're lightweight. They're breathable. Yeah. You also wear these and it's hot outside and somehow it's fine. You try wearing Wellingtons outside in summer, your feet are going to like turn into some sort of sweaty mess and you'll get gangrene. Allegedly. Look, they say talk about what I love with Vessies. I always say I just don't wear anything else. I am looking... Uh, the only, I keep one pair of Vessies or two pairs of Vessies like good looking to show on camera. But I look forward to when they send me more so I can wear the old ones that I had on camera before and just use them because I like using them. I do not wear other shoes at all at all even like when i go to like, i went to a funeral recently and i wore my bessies <laughs> ah, that is how much i love bessies and now today's episode oh i'm sorry i've got to give you a code obviously please use my code <laughs> what am i doing amateur uh look just go go get some bessies you won't regret it go to bessie.com slash unknown and what's the deal uh you'll get 25 dollars off each pair of adult bessie shoes that's brilliant plus free shipping to canada us Australia and New Zealand. Love it. Thank you, Vessi. Now the show. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Decoding the Unknown, the podcast where we decode the unknown. Yes, could you tell it was right there in the title? A skeptic look at, uh, well, this one's the secret Mother Earth frequency, turning, tuning into the global hum. And anytime anyone is like, anytime I read it, anytime anyone says it and is like, Mother Earth, I'm like, you. <laughs> what are you talking about? In a minute, you're going to be telling me that there's some sort of homeopathic recipe that I'm going to take and uh, I'm going to put some needles in my body and I'm going to put some hot rocks or some suction cups on my back. And it's like, no, please, no. Ah, Mother Earth. Oh, God. Uh, Danny wrote this one. Danny is uh, my main writer on another channel that I do. And he was like, I like to write some longer form stuff. So I was like, go ahead, Danny. This will be fun. Let's go. As much as we all crave the idea of enjoying a rare slice of blissful peace and quiet, I do wonder how many times any of us have ever experienced a sensation of complete silence. There's always someone or something making a bloody racket somewhere. I feel this is true. It's also relative. Like I live in a city, and whenever I go, whenever I go out to the countryside, I'm like, oh my god, it's so quiet. There's just the flow of the river. The rustle of the trees, the sound of the birds, it's just silence. And it's not silence, because all that shit is really loud. I mean, it's not, but it's like, it's definitely there. It's just so much quieter than this. It's so nice. I like the countryside. Even if you stepped into one of those freaky anechoic chambers, custom designed product testing rooms designed by the likes of Google to completely absorb any reflections of sound, you'll only end up getting driven to insanity by the beating of your own heart and the gurgling of your belly. I thought that was an urban legend. 
They're all gonna go insane down there and kill each other. Like, people don't go insane in those chambers, do they? Like, there's like, <laughs> there was some clickbait video by some, like, guy. It's one of these millions of people who wants to be Mr. Beast <laughs> or whatever. And it came up on my homepage or something like that. And it's like, I went insane in an hour of a, in an anechoic chamber. And it's like, no, he didn't go insane. <laughs> he just went in there. He was like, yeah, it's really quiet. And, <laughs> and then he came out. <laughs> End of story. No one went insane. It's just clickbait. I suppose that quite a lot depends on what we would define as peaceful sound and a disruptive sound. If you're enjoying a couple of hours of sunbathing or grave digging in your back garden, all right, Danny. <laughs> we did dig in a grave. Who's that for? Me. Uh... <laughs> Can you just be, you can't be buried in your back garden, can you? You have to be buried or like cremated in a certain place. You can't just be burying bodies back there like legally. You might, as you might well consider the relentless sounds of birdsong and chirping crickets to be perfectly natural elements of the peacetime ambience. But as soon as that idiot from next door fires up his ridiculous petrol lawnmower, you're going to feel annoyed that your already quite noisy silence had now been seemingly shattered. Your chances of ever escaping from the more unwelcome noises of the universe further diminished if you're one of the unfortunate minority be, minority to be permanently tuned into the low-pitched throbbing hum of mother earth chugging away in the background the global hum has been described as the sound of a diesel engine idling that's not that's not a hum that's like a bah, 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 bah. diesel diesel engines are noisy what <laughs> a fluorescent light bulb about to explode a dentist's drill and a distant disco blasting out 90s acid house tunes on an eternal loop this sounds really annoying. It sounds like what's that tinnitus where you have the the constant in your ears. I I can understand why that would drive people insane. And this and, and like why can't your brain tune that shit out? Like you know when you stare at a um if you have like if you draw a dot on a piece of paper like a big black dot and then you use a highlighter to draw all all around it and then you stare at the black dot for like a, like a minute eventually you can't see the highlighter on the page anymore it just looks like a regular white page why can't we do that with noises or maybe everyone else can and then there's just a few people who believe that they can hear all of this but then that doesn't explain tinnitus depending on where you live the mysterious noise can be heard by only 2 to 11 percent of the local community it can be heard outdoors although a big chunk of sufferers often collectively known as the hummers or the hearers can detect the noise more strongly inside their own home some claim that the hum is a constant 24-hour soundtrack, while others hear it particularly strongly at specific times of day. It's a sound which may or may not be impossible to capture on tape. And <laughs> that sounds like something that's easily provable. Can we try? Have we, has no one tried? <laughs> and if they haven't succeeded, then I'd say it's impossible. I mean, not impossible, because you could... Oh, okay, I get where you're coming from, Danny. I'm sorry, I'm being a small brain. And the long list of locations in which residents have complained about the noise that can't ever be silenced include quaint English villages, Scottish seaside resorts, Australian beach towns, and the desert landscapes of New Mexico. In my mind, I am hearkening back to a video that I must have made a bloody long time ago. Because I remember there being something called the Daos or Taos or... Ra something like this is a place in new mexico and there was a famous hum and i think it just ended up being like uh someone said they could hear it so someone else said they could hear it and then people thought they could hear it even though there was no hum or something like that i think i'm not sure i think it was all just ended up being like mass hysteria or maybe there was some binding going on somewhere and it was explained i think they've explained the one in new mexico at the very least the people tuned into the global hum can find it a bit annoying. In more extreme cases, it can lead to the shaking of pitch encounters, random nosebleeds, serious illness, and allegedly even death. And yet, surprisingly few people appear to have shown any interest in finding out what's causing it, leading to suspicions of an international cover-up. Perhaps we shouldn't be too surprised that an industrial planet crammed full of factories and vehicles can get a bit noisy at times, but some suggest it's not quite as simple as that yeah it is true like the world is so busy even if you go out to the countryside it's like you'll occasionally hear like a like a plane flying overhead or like a with like a distant road and someone driving a car that's too loud some asshole on a on a harley davidson motorbike with the pipes have not been quiet and down and pop off in the comments everyone is like oh i like my loud pipes <laughs> they make me feel like a big man and they make me feel better about my tiny penis. Ah! <laughs>
<laughs> I don't hate you. I just think you're wrong and stupid. And I have a small penis. How did we get here? Where are we going? What is time? Other contenders for the source of them include the sound of government-sanctioned 5G mind control program Sonic Fish and the constant buzzing of the refrigerator in your kitchen. Yeah, I mean, two of those things are real. Sorry, one of those things is real. The buzzing of your refrigerator. The other things are not. Sonic fish? What the f is that? Wait, Sonic fish could be real. I've never heard of it. But maybe there are such things as Sonic fish. Who knows? Or a grave warning of an impending catastrophe from Mother Earth. Or could it be that the sound only exists in the heads of the hearers? I think it's probably a combination of both. Some places there probably is a hum from like some mining or some sh that's going on or a distant motorway, something like that. But I think most of it's probably just in people's heads, like tinnitus. I guess that is in your head, technically, but that's because your ears are not right, right? The brain is picking up a sound. It's just coming from your ears because they're not working right, right? But it's not real. It's not, I mean, it is real, but it's not from the world. It's inside your head. Even if it's not the brain that's screwing up, which I think is normally what we mean by inside the head. Am I making sense here? By the way, please remember that closed captions are available on the YouTube version of this episode for those who can't hear Simon's voice above the cacophonous incidental music of the world. <laughs> It's true. I would certainly never describe myself as a hearer, although I am reminded of the strange background noise I often used to hear when I was a kid growing up in the old haunted mining town of Rotherham. And no, this isn't a build-up to a gang about the constant yells of terror on the streets of the north. It's absolutely true. I can most... <laughs> you go up north. It's just like a in war zone. I can most vividly remember hearing it when I was walking to school on the first day back after the summer holidays. It sounded like the mildly disconcerting rumbling of machinery in faraway factories on the horizon. But I couldn't think what factories could be making such a noise. I didn't think too much of it and never had a conversation with anyone about it at the time because I assumed we could all hear it. It was only years later when I brought it up in conversation that my old local friends looked at me as if I was spouting nonsense. Actually, that's not such an unusual look shot in my direction, especially around a pub table. <laughs> I later concluded that I maybe only picked up on the industrial noise because I was walking to school in the quiet stillness of the early morning for the first time in six weeks, when I'd become so accustomed to just watching Pink Panther cartoons in my pajamas while munching on Cocoa Pops. It's like a flashback to my own childhood. It often felt as if the noise was the world's sonic interpretation of my miserable slump back into monotonous mundaneity and a clear audio signal that we were officially on the dark path to winter. Yeah, Danny, you are. It's like speaking by language like i remember like after long summer holidays going back to school at the beginning of september it's kind of a little bit of a chill in the air that cold walk to school and you'd be like oh god what's i remember the biggest thing about going back to school was timetables do you does everyone else have this remember this like is this an american thing as well but you'd get the first day of school you'd go to registration there'd be a here's your timetable for the next year and you'd be like, oh my god, look at the timetable. And then you know you're just, be, please don't be a horrible day. Please don't be a horrible day where you're like, you know, double maths followed by English followed by double French or whatever. You're like, no! Why? Why not throw some art in there? Why do you have to do this to me? Then I'm going to dread Mondays. You bastards! There were no press reports of a Rotherham hum, though. The earliest recorded accounts of the mysterious background noise of Earth date back to, dates back to 1828, when a group of travelers began to climb Mount Maladeta in the Pyrenees and found that the eerie silence, not many petrol lawnmowers around those parts, presumably, uh, was broken by a dull, low moaning Aeolian sound, which was never identified. The first time that the global hum made the national headlines wasn't until the 1970s when the News of the World paper ran a story under the headline, Have You Heard the, Have you heard the Hum? The News of the World, that bastion of reliable ethical reporting. That was sarcasm, in my opinion. The story related to an outbreak of the hum in Bristol in England where a low-pitched noise had been giving the locals headaches, nosebleeds, and sleep loss. The newspaper later claimed that over 800 readers from around the UK had responded to the article, many of them speculating that the most likely cause was UFO activity. Uh, a bit like that in Bristol. <laughs> many of them speculated that the most likely cause was UFO activity. Doesn't mean that most people thought it was UFO activity. The phrasing of that sentence makes it seem almost like they did. It's just like many people, which could be honestly five, were like, oh, it's probably UFOs. It doesn't mean most people thought that because most people are not insane. Are you sure? It's either a mine 
or UFOs or an industri industrial factory of some kind. I mean, we're like, well, what's real here? What's actually exists? And obviously UFOs exist because it's just an unidentified flying object. But these people definitely mean aliens, don't they? A second outbreak was reported in the coastal town of Largs in Scotland in the 1980s. This one triggered headaches and chest pains and was noted as being particularly noisy from indoors late at night, with some of the affected residents suspecting that the local naval base may, may be to blame. A couple of years later, the hum was first reported to have crossed the Atlantic when the residents of Sausalito, California, complained of being awoken at night by a noise as loud as an airplane engine. That sounds much more real. Like a hum in the background is something you can imagine. Like, hmm. A plane going overhead is something that is not like, oh my god, I just imagined that. It's like, no, 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 that was real. <laughs> that sounded more like a car, but you get my meaning. A much bigger and more heavily publicized outbreak rocked up, rocked up in Taos, New Mexico. Boom! Remember that correctly. In the 1990s, or uh, in the 1990s, during which a whirring buzzing sound was annoying over 8,000 residents. See, that seems real. Unless it's, it, I mean, that's a lot of people for mass hysteria, prompting an official congressional investigation. No conclusion was ever reached, and the noise continues to be heard today. I really thought we'd figure that one was figured out. Okay. A reported constant low rumble in the industrial town of Kokomo in Indiana was apparently so powerful that it could make dead leaves dance on the ground. Kokomo sounds like it's in Hawaii. <laughs> I don't know why it does. It's like Bermuda. Da da da. Isn't that song? Da 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 da. To Kokomo. Oh, is it? It's Kokomo, isn't it? <laughs> Not Kokomo. I don't know. No, that's right. Isn't it the Beach Boys sing about that? I always assumed that it was some nice place. Not, I mean, I'm sure Kokomo in Indiana is lovely, but it's not Hawaii, is it? Why do I have that in my mind? Meanwhile, over on the other side of the globe, another hum in Auckland, New Zealand was so disruptive that it reportedly drove one hearer into revving up a chainsaw next to his ear in manic desperation. And one of the more famous hums of all time is the one first heard in Windsor, Canada in 2011, which some people claim sounds like the Enterprise from Star Trek gearing up for warp speed. Those are nerds. Whilst others suggest that it's more like the sound of the heartbeat you hear when pressing your ear against a pregnant belly. Those are really different sounds. Also, I knew I could do that. My wife thought I was crazy. I was like listening to, I think it was our first kid, and I was listening in on like her belly, and I could hear the heartbeat. And she's like, you can't hear that. You can't, you can't hear that. And I'm like, I can, I can hear it. It's like pop, 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 so fast. And she's like, you can't. Apparently you can. I didn't Google it, but I, 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 I knew I was right. <laughs> I kind of like this womb world theory. We could be living inside the pocket of a pregnant planet waiting for Mother Earth to give birth to us all and set us loose into base reality. Yeah, I don't like that theory, Daddy, because it's stupid. Well, so far I'm thinking that it's either that or a largely ignored, ignored SOS distress signal from an ancient alien civilization. Daddy! <laughs> Non-hearers or hum-deaf people might shrug all of this off as nutty nonsense, which isn't worth worrying too much about. I don't shrug it off as nutty nonsense. I do believe the people are hearing this. Whether this is because it exists or whether it's because of mass hysteria, do I think it should be shrugged off? Yeah, probably. <laughs> is it, I mean, or move, maybe? Or go see a audiologist? Audiologist? Audio ear, nose, and throats? <laughs> I don't know, someone like this can be like, hey, what's up? But some of the alleged side effects can be pretty serious, and it's not just the nosebleeds and the diarrhea and the nervous agitation and the need for some affected citizens to leave the house at night and sleep on park benches in a bid to break out from the blaring background babble. The Brist Bristol Hum was reported by the BBC to have been directly responsible for a suicide. And then there was the case of, this isn't because of the hum, this is because of untreated mental illness. Like, if you're killing yourself because of a hum, you need to see a professional. Is the failure of that not because they, there's, there's a, no. What are you doing Saturday night? Committing suicide. What about Friday night? And then there was the case of the 2013 Washington Naval Yard shooting, during which the perpetrator, Aaron Alexis, fatally shot 12 victims before he himself was shot dead by the police. How crazy is it that there was a shooting with 12 victims uh, less than a decade ago that I just don't even have heard of or remember? Because 
there are way too many shoot mass shootings that's wild 12 people a message later retrieved on the killer's computer revealed ultra low frequency attack is what i've been subject to for the last three months and to be perfectly honest that is what has driven me to this having said that i think alexis may have also had several other troubles kicking up inside his head which ran deeper than a simple low frequency hum yeah that sounds like you know he's paranoid so again this is not because of a hum this is because of a failure of healthcare it might have proved helpful if somebody out there could at least have found a medical solution to blocking out the hum slipping on a big pair of earmuffs to drown out the noise might sound like a good idea but many hearers conclude that this strangely just intensifies the pulsating throb the most effective recommended remedy provided by the hearer community is to mask the sound by switching on loud hissing electric fans but that sounds a bit bonkers to me I had a mate called Colin who reckons that he was minding his own business in town one day when he was suddenly accosted by a group of thug thugs who threatened to punch him in the face for no reason. Danny, this was up north, wasn't it? This must have been up north. Danny lives now down south, so I can't believe this would happen in in the south that's very bizarre colin's response was to freak out the thugs by punching himself repeatedly in the face while yelling aggressively that he could probably do a better job of it on his own <laughs> holy shit, colin <laughs> you sound like a badass when sharing this heartwarming anecdote with me colin seemed quite proud of his tactic that as it has apparently worked the thugs just shrugged their shoulders and wandered off to bother a slightly less potty victim but i felt compelled to point out to colin that he hadn't really solved what i would have considered the fundamental points of not getting punched in the face and it's a similar thing with the electric fan tactic you're blocking out an irritating noise by replacing it with an even more irritating noise which is spectacularly missing the point still the hero community don't have much else to go on they may have formed positively buzzing online groups in which they can share ideas solutions news and yes conspiracy theories oh my god these people are into conspiracy theories what a twist they are <laughs> <laughs> sarcasm folks but they've largely been left to their own devices as not many others seem willing to investigate the problem authorities rarely seem keen to invest time or waste money into tackling the harm as they bloody well shouldn't don't waste money on that there's real problems and not many people bother to take the matter seriously the hearers are often seen as delusional attention seekers and they're grouped together with ufo spotters and conspiracy theorists and people who claim to enjoy hand cans of heineken <laughs> u.s geoscientist david deming put together a rare comprehensive academic report in 2004. David is himself a hero. He's also a climate change denier who believes that carbon taxes are stupidity taxes. Carbon tax. He doesn't believe in climate change, but he also says carbon taxes are stupidity taxes. Isn't that like a. Isn't that an. Uh, a counter to the previous statement? The, the stupidity taxes for using carbon. So he thinks people are using carbon are not stupid. But then he thinks that people who are using carbon are stupid. But then he also doesn't believe in climate change, I assume being caused by us using carbon. What are you talking about, David? American science teacher and lecturer Dr. Glenn McPherson, or another hero who sounds much more like a guy you'd enjoy having a drink with, took out the baton in 2012 with his own investigations. But both these studies ended up on very weird notes for different reasons that we'll come back to later. Dr. Glenn McPherson also took the time to set up the World Hum Map and database, inviting the troubled public to write in with their own humming experiences so that he could plot them on a map and record data relating to each individual. This is going to be so hard to do because, like I said, there's there's two things that are going. There's probably three things. There are people who do this to seek attention i think they're probably a minority group then there's people who do hear a real hum because of some machinery or something nearby and they're particularly sensitive to it and then there are people who think they hear a hum but the hum is not real it's going to be really hard to discern those three groups from each other and plot them on a map because even if you're like okay well we're getting a lot of people from this town that isn't necessarily because there's a real hum it could just be people telling each other about the hum and then them all thinking that they can hear it as well whereas in a random village where there is no hum no one's ever going to bring up that there's a hum even if it's not real and so it's going to be really hard to to sift that data and find reliable stuff that's any use whatsoever unless you can you could map it along with industrial uh, how industrial an area is how populated an area is that kind of stuff and see if there's any um groupings that way something like that over 7,000 hearers responded mostly from the u.s and western europe you know why <laughs> there's a couple of things probably I, I don't i want to put it down it's partly a language thing sure but also because uh people in the u.s and western europe don't have problems like i mean obviously we've got problems like there's things going on we don't you know it's like or whatever but if you're not putting food on the table if you're getting cholera if uh your country's at war you're going to be like, that's a weird hum. Oh my God, I've got other shit to worry about. I'm not going to fill out some survey about a hum. 
this only happens in countries which have solved most problems and i'm not saying that the u.s or western europe has solved worse all the world's problems but you know there's not a war going on in the backyard there's not a struggle to put mm, there is struggle to put food on the table but it's not the same as like with, there's no cholera for example better example simon and we learned at least a couple of interesting new noisy nuggets of information from the database for example it was originally reported that in the uk 75 percent of hearers were women who were middle-aged or older and this was widely accepted for decades but dr glenn discovered that the average age of a hearer is 40. wait the actual age of a hearer is 40 so that is middle age or older that is middle age 40 or middle age no question about it i'm 35. i described myself as middle aged the other day so i was like whoa 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 no <laughs> and that is much more of an even split and there's much more of an even split between men and women so this can't be something else that we can just chalk up to women's troubles <laughs> danny no it has also been accepted for years <laughs> Only around 2% of a local community were able to detect the global harm, whereas Dr. Glenn was the first to notice that this figure rose sharply to 11% in other specific areas. Dr. Glenn now believes that approximately 4% of the entire global population are tuned into the global hum. What's the most logical explanation that we've come up with for the secret Mother Earth frequency? <laughs> The experts might not have reached a definitive conclusion yet, but I reckon we've pretty much cracked it without the need to spend years researching it or drawing it on lots of pretty maps. But let's first take a look at some of the more popular theories that have gained traction over the years, one of which might just be bang on the money. I think we can begin by dismissing some of the more outlandish theories which speculate that the source of the global hum is the breaking of the seventh seal, echoes of the Big Bang, a government-sanctioned form of remote torture, and ghosts tunneling under the earth. <laughs> Danny, tell me. I can believe that the first ones are all real, but ghosts tunneling under the earth? <laughs> well, that's some David Icke sh right there. You can't believe that. Twaddle. Although we might mock the idea of Mother Earth making the sound herself, whoa, whoa, whoa. I would not mock that that hard at all. Like, Mother Earth makes noises all the time. The weather's fucking noisy. Uh, earthquakes are fucking noisy. The sea. Have you heard the sea? It could be mega. No it's mega noisy. I bet some of the loudest sounds ever made have been made by Mother Nature. The sound. The sun. Loud. You know, if there wasn't a vacuum in space, how loud the sun would be to us. If sound could travel through a vacuum, it would be like. A, a train passing right next to you all the time is how loud the sun would be mother nature is noisy danny it's not out of the question that we could hearing the perfectly natural noises of a planet just trying to go about its business scientists have long speculated that the earth creates ultra low frequencies as it constantly vibrates vi as it constantly vibrates and stretches and compresses and yawns but it's probably going to be a very different difficult thing to measure and the sound would almost certainly be undetectable by any human ear a team of french researchers reported in 2015 that the hum is far more likely to be generated from the floor of the ocean they discovered that colliding waves moving in opposite directions can create very weak micro seismic waves that cause the ocean floor to vibrate producing a low frequency oscillation which could be picked up by humans with very sensitive hearing i like that that's completely reasonable or it could be now what are we going to do about it or it could be the vibrations from erupting volcanoes they tend to drag on a bit and can circle the earth several times over when krakatoa erupted in 1883 the earth was left quivering like jelly for several days however elizabeth schiller a canadian physicist who in investigated the windsor hum suggests that none of these natural theories which also include underground volcanic activity and the movement of tectonic plates are consistent with the reported manifestations of the hum and none of them fully explain why certain outbreaks of the hum lasted for a specific time frame in a specific location before largely disappearing it's not as if volcanoes suddenly stopped erupting or the ocean floor suddenly stopped vibrating perhaps we don't have to dig quite so deep down to consider a far more obvious suggestion industrial earth is a pretty clangorous place which is constantly bombarded with man-made noise pollution from factories vehicles and construction workers building the latest branches of taco bell we're bound to hear a bit of sound in the background from time to time aren't we yes all the time it's the, oh, the, the we talked about this at the beginning earth's really loud constantly it's also interesting to note that the majority of reported outbreaks occur in urban areas 
Could it be that they're more noisy? <laughs> it could be the case that the industrial noise is always there, but it's usually drowned out in the bustle of the cities by the constant sound of chatter and life and people complaining about potholes. Uh, <laughs> have I thought about the pothole conspiracy? This is like one of my favorite conspiracy theories. Like, oh, worry, there are... Prague's weird. There, there are some big streets, like big streets that are pieces of shit like there is uh one that runs from it's like the main uh big road that i'll take into town and it has some potholes which you can feel are damaging your car and the pothole conspiracy is that the government's got no motivation to fix the potholes because damaged cars mean they go to garages where they get repaired and that is good for the economy so fixing potholes is just expensive whereas leaving the potholes and all the cars to get damaged and stuff is just labor and that means money to the government so it's like and to the economy so i'm like (laughs) can we still fix the potholes they're really annoying i don't like paying to repair my car i don't want to continue this tangent but i will just say that i think my car went through a really bad pothole because a little bit of the like manifolding underneath just has popped off from one of the screws and I'm like, I don't go off-roading. <laughs> it's like an estate car, um, which I think Americans called a wagon. Um, and yeah, I think it was from a really bad pothole. And I know I'm going to get take it to get service this year. And you're going to be like, oh, that's going to be really expensive. <laughs> We only begin to detect it when we get back to the relative calm of leafy suburbia. The only problem with this theory is that a big chunk of hearers claim to only hear the noise indoors, which wouldn't really make much sense if the noise was coming from outside. Uh, This could be like it's resonating through the ground, so like when you're inside you don't hear like the traffic going by and all of that stuff, but you could still hear like a, a deeper rumbling, right? So this leads us to the next obvious suggestion. The noise is just the indoor sounds of humming refrigerators and electrical appliances in the home. Nope, this has apparently been disproved too. Several hearers have gone as far as to turn off all the power in the homes in a bid to escape the din, but find that the hum only becomes stronger in the absence of any noisy, powered-up appliances. That is the first thing I'd do. If there was a weird hum, I'd be like, well, I don't know if it's coming from me or my neighbors or somewhere else, so let's turn off all my power and see if it continues. And if it continues, then I'll be like, okay, great. There's nothing I can do about this. If it doesn't continue, then I'll be like, okay, well, I'm going to switch every little switch on the breaker back on until I figure out which uh, device is, like, which region of the house it's in. And then once I've found that out, I'll turn on that one region. I'll go by and I'll unplug all the devices until I figure out what it is. And then whatever it is, I will throw that device away. Problem solved. It's too much work. So we must now be getting close to the truth. It's all just inside people's heads, isn't it? All these hearers must really be suffering from tinnitus, an internal perception of sound generated by your auditory and nervous system, which often expresses itself as a ringing or clicking or buzzing noise in your ears. Whoa, I didn't know that there was a clicking. That would be even more annoying. In fact, Jonathan, in fact, Dr. Jonathan Hazel from the Royal National Institute for Deaf People in the UK was quite adamant about this in 1994. He dismissed the global hum as rubbish and sniffily declared, hummers are just a group of people who cannot accept that they have tinnitus. However, 2004, climate change denying investigators, <laughs> I just love that you throw that in there, Danny, David Deming utterly rejected this theory in his study. He pointed out that the hum sounds reported by hearers are significantly different to the symptoms of tinnitus. The hum is also usually only heard at very specific times of day, particularly late at night and early morning, and in very specific locations. In contrast, tinnitus is pretty much omnipresent and can be heard anywhere. David Deming, though, I mean, just because because he's, he's a climate change now, we know he's not very good at analyzing, you know, actual evidence. So I'm not really sure why we pay attention to him when he's trying to analyze evidence. It just it, that doesn't make much sense to me. Besides, the idea of whole towns getting caught up in a spread of contagious tinnitus doesn't really ring true. So, I guess that leaves us with mass hysteria. When in doubt and no other options are left on the table, we can usually chalk it down to a psychological phenomenon of mass hysteria in which large groups of people get caught up in collective delusions that spiral out of control. I Look, David, uh, with the tinnitus thing, who said it was tinnitus? No, it was the other guy. I'm sure there are some cases like a buzzing and a hum sure maybe someone hears a hum there are going to be some cases of tinnitus where someone hears a hum surely or something that they are mistaking for a hum there are people who are going to be involved in mass delusions there are people who are going to be hearing machinery there are going to be people who are making it up 
it's a big collection of all of these things. They're not mutually exclusive in any way. But David Deming isn't having any of that either. Why do we care what David Deming thinks? In his 2004 study, he noted that the global hum is curiously publicity shy, whereas a mass hysteria event thrives and escalates on word of mouth. Any excitement over the hum appears, if anything, to die down a little after a new outbreak is reported in the press and then quickly forgotten about. He also points out that most heroes tend to carry out their own independent research, which leads them to the wider hero community rather than just joining in the mad throng of mass hysteria. So, what conclusion did David Deming reach in his original 2004 study? Well, he's very convinced that very low frequency VLF radio signals produced by the military were to blame. David Deming definitely seems like he believes in conspiracy theories. I don't believe this. This doesn't seem like the most likely explanation in any way whatsoever. And it's going to be one of those things where there's no real evidence backing it up. He's just like, I think that's what's happening. And I'll be like, David, I just think it's not that. And he'll be like, well, we'll agree to disagree. And I'm like, we're not agreeing to disagree. You've come up with a theory and it's on you to prove it. <laughs> David, you cock, allegedly. He's not objectively a cock. That, I couldn't say that. I could say he's a cock in my opinion. I think he's a cock. During the 1960s, I don't know anything about him. I just think his opinions make him seem like a bit of a cock. During the 1960s, the US Navy rolled out the take charge and move out system, which enabled a network of aircraft to communicate with submerged nuclear submarines and other vessels via a VLF radio wave with frequencies from 3 to 30 hertz. I'm going to bet 3 to 30 hertz is well below what humans can hear. Deming observed that frequencies could be low and powerful enough to attack the human senses and induce a crippling headache, and this could also explain why a source location can never be accurately pinned down as the source is actually a fleet of moving aircraft okay so vlf exists can it cause headaches and shit show me prove it to me give me some evidence it's also worth noting that this upgrading of military technology more or less coincided with the first reports of the global hum in the states interesting deming rounded off his study by proposing that his theory could easily be tested by building a big sealed box which blocked all low frequency waves and then stepping inside the box to ascertain if the noise disappeared okay well you're gonna need to double blind that study obviously and secondly well have you done it it doesn't how hard can it be to block these waves or just go to a really deep bunker underground where they can't penetrate the earth they exist and turn off all the power and sit in there come on this this isn't going to be impossible is it all right so this is the bit where deming builds the big box to test his theories right yes no. After reaching this dramatic conclusion, Deming suddenly lost all interest in the global hum and buggered off back to denying climate change and suggesting that gay people are destined to catch syphilis. <laughs> really? David, I don't like you. It was Dr. Glenn McPherson who came across Deming's findings in 2012 and decided to carry on with the work that Deming had lazily slacked off on. <laughs> Danny, cut him some slack. He's busy being homophobic. It's a bit of a cock, in my opinion. Dr. Glenn raised the money for materials via crowdsourcing and teased the building of the box to the online community of hearers. And yet, when the VLF blocking box was finally complete, Dr. Glenn strangely developed cold feet about stepping inside. When Colin Dickey from the New Republic conducted an interview with Dr. Glenn in 2016, Colin was under the impression that he would witness the testing of the box. But whilst Dr. Glenn was happy enough to show off the black, low-carbon steel box in his woodshed, he refused to even open it. He came up with increasingly vague excuses about how he didn't believe the conditions were right and how he didn't want to get too distracted from his main job as the school year was about to start up again well you've built it all why not you've, you've obviously made an effort something has changed why aren't you being a good scientist like you go into things and uh, with like be like well i don't know that's what I'm trying to find out. You don't, why would you be biased? Surely it would only take in a couple of bloody minutes. And the online community began to get increasingly frustrated with Dr. Glenn's reticence, with one forum member angrily urging, Go in already! What is it with this cliffhanger sh? <laughs> Dr. Glenn eventually plucked up the courage to step inside the box before the year was out. The result? He could hear the global hum as loud as ever. Bugger. What a surprise. What a huge shock that that turned out to be. The climate change denying syphilis gay person whatever was wrong. <laughs> Surprise. Perhaps the whole hypothesis was doomed to fail anyway, as researchers from the University of Illinois had already stated that it's incredibly unlikely that non-pulse, continuously varying radio frequency signals could have any impact on living tissue or human auditory systems. Again, 
shocking. It may sound as if we're getting nowhere fast in finding a definitive answer, but it's claimed that different answers have already been found for specific outbreaks of the hum. The Kokomo hum in Indiana is believed to have been traced to a cooling tower in a local Daimler Chrysler plant in an air compressor and, and an air compressor Haynes International plant. When both were powered down, the hum seemed to stop for the majority, but some still heard it. And this is the thing. There are two groups of people. There are some people who can hear it. There are some people who think they can hear it and there are some people who are making it up. The people who could hear it in this one are the ones it stopped for. The people who are either making it up or just imagining it, it didn't. This is they, they did not mutually exclusive. The Windsor Hum in Canada was connected to the blast furnaces in operation at US Steel's Great Lakes Works on Zarg Island across the Detroit River in Michigan. The steel plant refused to cooperate with silly investigations, but when oh, the financially troubled company closed down indefinitely in 2020, the noise disappeared with it but not for all slightly more fishy explanations were uncovered for hums in california west seattle and hive in the uk the Salito hum in california was believed to be the mating cry of the humming toadfish the male fish can vibrate their gas bladders oh my god sonic fish exist up to 150 times per second in a bid to catch some sexy fun time action and the sound is powerful enough to resonate through the hulls of houseboats. That's amazing. I had no idea that was a real thing. That's kind of cool. On a very similar note, the West Seattle hum and the High hum were deemed to be down to the mating call of the midshipman fish and other sonic fish. <laughs> This is cool, but not everyone is totally convinced about that. In the case of West Seattle, a researcher from the University of Washington reckoned that the sound is not powerful enough to reach inland, whilst the Hythe Council pointed out that they don't even get many sonic fish in the UK. And as for the unreported Rotherham hum, I reached out on social media to a group of old friends to ask if they could remember it. Most of them told me to stop talking sh and a few of them suggested that it could have been the sound of traffic blowing in on the winds from the nearest motorway. A couple of others told me that there used, used to be some sort of steelworks factory very nearby, of which I have no memory. One of them reported that they could still hear the hum, but her husband couldn't hear a thing. So, we're still left with a giant pulsating web of contradictions. It's the sound of an industrial world which can also be heard more strongly indoors. It's an acoustic sound which is only intensified when you wear earmuffs. It's a constant sound which can only be heard at certain times of day. It's an internal body sound which can be heard simultaneously by several people with no medical conditions. It's a hum and a whir and a deep throbbing rumble, and it's a sound which is impossible to record, yet some people have recorded it quick note about that last point dr glenn mcpherson reckons that nobody has ever quite successfully captured the hum yet somebody did upload an alleged 12-hour recording of the tau hum to youtube in 2014. i really wouldn't recommend tracking it down it's largely just 12 hours of fuzzy droning nothingness and we surely can't be boring you that much <laughs> however when financial times reporter imogen west knight investigated the halifax hum in west yorkshire in 2022 she surprised herself by picking up on the noise and attempted to capture the sound on her mobile phone when she returned to her tower in that night the hum had mysteriously disappeared from the recording no it hadn't that's not how recordings work it was never there in the first place <laughs> it's not like i come back to a video later and there's just that whoops wrong side <laughs> it's just like that lamp is missing it's not how recordings work it's it wasn't there when i started recording it like can you see there's a little fire extinguisher down there it's been there for days i keep forgetting to remove it But it's precisely all these contradictions which have led to my own firm conclusion, which I'm sure many of you have reached way ahead of me. We will never find a definitive answer to the golden hum. And that's because there's absolutely no such thing. Oh, did I just say golden hum? Global hum. And that's because there's absolutely no such thing as the global hum, or at least there's no single hum which is collectively heard by people scattered all over the world. We clearly, despite what old Cocky McCock would tell you, we clearly don't all hear things in exactly the same way. Most humans can pick up frequencies between 20 and 20,000 hertz. Any frequency below this range is classed as infrasound, while any frequency above that range is classed as ultrasound. But some people are still naturally going to be more sensitive than others, leading to that classic exchange often wheeled out in horror movies. Can you hear that? What is that sound? Can you hear that? Just, just listen. Where's it coming from? No, I can't hear a thing. It's not just a movie trope. Some ears will naturally pick up things that others don't. Also, the second guy in that conversation is about to get devoured by a werewolf. <laughs> Tropity trope. Perhaps of equal importance is how we react 
to sound. While most of us might be able to blank out any unwelcome or irrelevant background noise, others can become totally fixated on an irritating sound, and this only serves to increase the hearer's anxiety and amplify the volume of the noise. One example that instantly springs to my mind is the ticking alarm clock that I keep in the guest bedroom of my cottage in Cornwall. When some of my visitors or captured tourists <laughs> wake up in the next morning, wake up the next morning. They complained to me that they had to rip the batteries out of the alarm clock as the constant ticking was driving them round the bends. Yet when I ask other guests about it, they say that they never even noticed there was a ticking alarm clock in the room at all. I find it quite soothing. Like that tick, 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 tick. I totally don't mind that. I'm like, oh. it's it's like, it's just, you know, it's it's rhythmic. I think it's perfectly plausible that many hearers are just people with sensitive hearing who are zoning in on the everyday background noises of the world, such as factories, traffic, power lines, blast furnaces, construction work, and repetitive burger flipping. I'm pretty sure that my own Rotherham Hun, which I only heard early in the morning outdoors, was simply an industrial noise intensified by the direction of the wind. In more unusual cases, we could potentially be hearing underground activity, high pressure gas pipes, the mating cry of horny sonic fish, or in one particular case, seismic signals. A Hun outbreak in 2018 was comprehensively traced to the island of Mayotte in the Indian Ocean. The island had experienced an extraordinarily large number of tectonic earthquakes that were creating seismic signals which sounded like the tone of a large bell that lasted for up to half an hour each time. If the hum follows you indoors, you could potentially be hearing something inside your own home. I strongly suspect that many sufferers who haven't yet experimented with powering down really are just tuning into the sounds of their own electrical appliances and the buzzing of their own fridges. And of course, some breeds of hum may have no external source at all. That 12-hour recording of the Tao hum most likely comes from a recording of a very real sound, but it would be far more difficult to capture other sounds that only exist inside the human body. Some hearers are probably suffering from genuine cases of tinnitus, but that's probably not the only explanation for an internal noise. In 2009, science writer Benjamin Radford explained how our ears are capable of generating their own quirky little noises, known as spontaneous autoacoustic emissions. I don't know if I've heard that. I mean, I've, I've not heard of these, but have I ever heard sounds that aren't there? I guess you wouldn't know, right? You'd be like, like I just heard a little in the other room, like a little click or, or something, you know, maybe it's just the kettle going you know cooling down or you know something like that or computer getting warm and it's like that's what i think it is but maybe it could just be my ear being weird you just wouldn't know because you'd just be like it's a weird sound in the other room that's crazy the vast majority of us won't ever hear them but some people will pick up on the buzzing and ringing and hissing tones of this diy ear disco if they're enjoying a particularly quiet moment okay never mind it was the kettle <laughs> as for dr glenn mcpherson he now seems to be leaning towards the idea that some hums are triggered by an entirely neurological element in the human brain which we simply haven't begun to identify yet sounds quite reasonable to me presumably he threw his useless big black box into the skip or converted it into an outdoor dog bath ultimately the reason that different humans Hearers report different types of sounds at different times of day in different locations is because they're potentially reporting the sounds of thousands of different things under thousands of different conditions. Yes, the hearers aren't all humming to the same tune. Yeah, this is the thing. It, well, like I've said many times, it's not mutually exclusive. There's tons of stuff going on here. Still, this has given me a good idea for my next script. Over the years, I've heard countless stories from people all over the world who walk into completely un unconnected locations and complain that it smells a bit funny in here. This can't be a coincidence. But is your new nose tuned into the great global whiff? Leave the map and database to me. I've got this. Thank you, Danny. Very nice. Um, I like this one. It's kind of like a sciencey exploration. Uh, thank you for watching or listening, however you consume this show. If you're listening to it in podcast form, reviews are always appreciated. Thank you so much. On YouTube, like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.